Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've got a reaction for you. It's a little different doing a video that's not scripted because those have been my last several videos. But uh, today, I'm just reacting to Star Wars Theory's newest video of him kind of just going off about uh, Disney Star Wars. And uh, as you can see, how he's saying he's done here, Disney's destroying Star Wars, all that good stuff. A lot of this is, I'm sure, stemming off of the Gina Carano situation. I'm not going to speak on that because... I'm not 100% educated in what is exactly going on there. So what I'm just going to be doing now is reacting to what he's saying. I'm going to let it play out, uh, and then I will give my full thoughts on it towards the end. So let's, uh, let's get into it. You know what? Screw arguably. It was the most important show that Star Wars could ever have released after George sold it to Disney. We got Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. We got Anakin Skywalker oh, and think... Obi-Wan Kenobi, as well as Luke Skywalker and Leia. Literally the main characters of Star Wars, the most important part, time, everything. And what kind of a budget does it get? It, it gets not even less than Andor, which I think had like $130 million or $110 million or, or maybe even more than that. What was the budget for Andor? Hold on here before I even get ahead of myself. Is this starting off? You guys are going to see Andor? such a more real. Hold on, sorry. Andor had a three hundred and fifty million dollar budget. Budget for Andor. Hold on here. Hold Brian, on, sorry. I, I I know I said I'd let it play out. Two hundred and fifty million dollar budget. Holy crap! Okay. Anyway, is he mainly upset that Kenobi? You guys are going to see such a more real side of me as we push into 2024 because I'm fed up. I'm really tired. I'm really fed up. People that don't like me already don't like me. People that love me already love me. And I'm here for you guys. And I'm not here for anyone else. At the end of the day, I'm here for George Lucas. I'm here for Star Wars. I'm here for myself and what Star Wars used to be. Let's get a few things out of the way. Not everything that Disney has created is total garbage. I, maybe, you know, okay. 80, 90%. But there is that 10% that is actually really amazing. Mandalorian Season 1 and 2, Tales of the Jedi, The Clone Wars Season 7, Rebels, Ahsoka up until Episode 7 and 8. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, not everything that has been created under Disney's umbrella Ahsoka was garbage. All the way now, through, mind so... you, those things were created by Dave Filoni and John Favreau. But I digress. Obi-Wan Kenobi, the most important Star Wars project since Disney purchased Lucasfilm from George Lucas in 2012, and it gets the lowest budget of any Star Wars show to date. She-Hulk gets a better budget than Obi-Wan? Freaking She-Hulk. I mean, <laughs> what the hell, man? Like, who is making these decisions up there? I'm sorry to make this kind of video, dude, but honestly, like, who is making those decisions up there? You wonder why Star Wars is in such a state where Shambles. no one is interested anymore. Nobody gives a crap. It's because of shit like this. And you know what? The budget wasn't even the biggest problem of the show. You have fan films. You have fan fictions that have like no budget. That have like like the budget of an internet connection and a computer. That hey, don't call me out like that. More attention and love. <laughs> That's what my fan the budgets are. Garbage writing and directing that flew into the Kenobi show. You have the most important characters in Star Wars. Not only that, you're bringing back Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor. Forget Jimmy Smits and everybody else. You're bringing back the goats, okay? The the original, well, the prequel trilogy. <laughs> the original, the, the original, the OGs, man. The OGs from the prequels, okay? Yeah, the, pre, the prequel and trilogy you, isn't the original. You not only, it's, you know, give not. a crap script, you get people that don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to writing the stories and the characters that George built and created. You regress them. You focus on Reva. You make chasing Leia literally like the most impossible thing to find a nine-year-old or ten-year-old. And above all, you have open-handed combat from a civilian against stormtroopers. Oh I mean, look, stormtroopers suck, but they're not, they don't get, they don't get disoriented like that from, you know, a slap yeah, on the head. That, okay. Uh, but then you also manage to give literally the worst script of all time, the lowest budget of all time. I, I don't get it. I, I don't, I'm trying, as like, I'm trying to understand That's the wild this. thing I'm to really me. trying to... Sorry, again, that's the wild thing to me is that Kenobi, it, it could have been great. We did a whole podcast episode on it. Kenobi, the what we saw wasn't bad. It was the storytelling. Like, a 
storytelling in a sense, like, I don't know. I'm not going to try to speak as if I know everything about film and everything about budgets and whatnot, but you can tell a good story and not have a huge budget. Like, they just, yeah, I, yeah. Who's make who's making these decisions, dude? Let's give this script the crappiest script of all time. Let's regress the characters, and then let's give them the lowest budget of our of the most important story in Star Wars, the most important characters in Star Wars. But let's just literally give them the bare minimum, but focus all of our attention in Andor, which yes, Andor is a great show for everyone who attended film school and wants to eat their cheese with a French hat so they can twiddle their mustache at the same time and talk about the Renaissance era and how great things were back then while they sip on their wine from 1922. Okay, don't... Okay, I have to say, I have to jump in again. I have to say that uh, Andor, to me, is the least entertaining Star Wars I've ever watched. I love the underworld of Star Wars. I love that vibe of stuff. Simply for me... Cassie and Andor's story is not something that I care about because I know he dies in Rogue One. That's the issue I have with new characters that they introduce that just die. Like, yes, we all know knew it was going to happen to Obi Wan and Anakin and or to Vader and all that stuff going into the prequels. But like side characters like Cassie and Andor, like we we knew his story in Rogue One. We knew he was part of that corrupt rebellion, and then he changed in uh rogue one so we don't i i just didn't care to see his change so yeah he theory's not wrong here a lot of the andor fans that i've like the creators and the people i've actually interacted with they kind of have that better than you attitude if if you don't like andor so i i have to give him props there that i andor andor's just eh, to me i don't see why so many people love it but Continuing. Don't get me wrong. I liked Andor. I liked it. It was a good show. It was fine. It was cozy. It was also extremely boring and made me fall asleep a million times while I was watching it. But it was still a good show. I whatever. I enjoyed it. Just sleepy time. Okay. Like you want me you want to put to sleep? You watch Andor. You want Star Wars? You watch Obi Wan Kenobi. You watch Revenge of the Sith. You don't watch Obi Wan Kenobi. You watch Revenge of the Sith. You're watching. So I'm I'm going Italian now. That six percent Italian is coming out, and I'm starting to get a little bit angry here. You want to watch Star Wars? You watch the first six movies, and you watch the Clone Wars. That's Star Wars. You want to create a Star Wars project? You create the Obi Wan Kenobi show, but not the way it was written by Joby Harold and directed by Deborah Chow. What is this now? You get someone competent <laughs> what, what, what who knows happened? the characters and respects the characters. You get John Favreau and Dave. Why didn't John Favreau and Dave Filoni do the Kenobi show? Why? Okay, here's here's where I also have to jump in. Dave Filoni and John Favreau are not the the gods that everybody thinks that they are. A, just remember Mandalorian season three. B, remember the Boba Fett show. John Favreau and Dave Filoni are good, but they're not great to me. Like everyone's like, what about what about Ahsoka? What about this? Yes, they are good in their element. Uh, Dave Filoni, John Favreau with the Mandalorian. That's the, obviously I personally think the Mandalorian has overstayed its welcome. But when it came to the Ahsoka show, that's Dave's baby. That's Dave's project. That's Dave's whole thing. They go outside of their comfort zone, like with the book of Boba Fett, and that's what we get. I can't get behind this mentality of people praising Dave Filoni and John Favreau when Disney does something great, but then when Dave Filoni and John Favreau are attached to something that flops, they aren't held accountable. Mandalorian season three wasn't great. The book of Boba Fett, even less so. I personally don't think that the Kenobi show would have been better if Dave Filoni and John Favreau were on it just because it's not in their element. Yes, we would have got more prequel stuff, but it's not their element. Um, but that's that's just where, you know, I'm a firm believer that Sam Witwer should. Anyway, continuing. Why didn't they do all shows? I mean, okay, Andor was fine. It was, keep, keep the guy there. But even he said, he's like, half the time I forgot I was doing a Star Wars show. This is just, I am so tired. I'm so tired of being, trying to be so nice to people. Man, I don't care if you don't like what I have to say. Don't watch my videos. 
I'm not here for them. I'm here for me. I'm here for Star Wars, George Lucas, and to protect the legacy because, quite frankly, dude, I'm the only one that keeps doing it. And they make clips of me on TikTok, whatever, they can keep doing it, but I'm literally the only one who keeps driving the point home that Star Wars is what George created. It's not this shit that's been created now and given a crap budget so that She-Hulk can shine through as she twerks with Meg the Stallion. I, mean, I just don't get it, man. How can this $4 billion company be handled by these buffoons who don't even understand the characters, but also assign these nitwits to write for these Nitwit. legendary characters and at the same time give them pennies? But then they want to give She-Hulk the most money because it's what, CGI? You guys remember the ending of She-Hulk? What the hell did they do to Hulk's son? You guys remember that? Andor? Why does Andor have a $250 million budget? I mean, I feel like we should have paid 20, 30 million at least to Hayden, 20, 30 million to Ewan, 60 million right there. Oh shit, you have chill, the whole budget. Chill. 20, 30 million to Hayden and Ewan? I mean, Ewan, okay, Hayden. I love I, I I love that Hayden Christensen's gotten his 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 redemption or whatever you want to call it. Chill, because there's other people on the project that you gotta pay, my man. Whoa, okay, okay. It's, I know you love the prequels, but it's, it's chill. Show, but they give two hundred fifty million to Andor, two fifty million to or two twenty five million to She Hulk. You're looking at 500 million, you're looking at half a billion dollars for two shows, which honestly aren't even the most important things in either of their franchises. True. What the hell are these people thinking? And you're wondering why South Park is making these kinds of comments towards Kathleen Kennedy. It's because people there clearly aren't using their brains. And it seems like I'm taking crazy pills. I'm starting to feel like I'm Mugatu. It's like, does nobody see this? And we're all just standing around like, hey, it's okay. We got Andor. Andor's the best Star Wars we've ever... It's not. <laughs> it's Blade Runner with a Star Wars theme. It's not bad. I love Blade Runner. Go to my Theory Talks channel. I'm always playing Blade Runner music. But that doesn't mean it's a good show for Star Wars. The Last Jedi was the most asinine representation of a continuation of Luke Skywalker's story that I've ever seen in my life. Yet it was a good movie. It just wasn't a good Star Wars movie. What the heck? I just, I don't... Uh, it's debatable. In the sense that... Do you know the movie how, how to Lose a Guy in 10 Days? I feel like Disney has one, like how to lose star, how to lose a franchise in, in 10 years. And now they're pouring all this money and focusing on the Ray movie. Like, are you guys not learning your lesson? Are, like, seriously, are you not learning your lesson? I just don't get it, man. I don't get it how they can be so out of touch. Make better Star Wars, dude. Make Mando season one and two. Make that continuously. Two I don't know what the hell the happened with the book of Boba Fett. But obviously someone- I'll tell you what happened is that John Favreau was the freaking showrunner on that. Contrary to popular belief, John Favreau isn't amazing. I've already said this. John Favreau is good in certain areas, in his element. Boba Fett, in the sense, as I've said, Boba Fett was a side character. He shouldn't have been the main character in his own show. I've been doing a series as to the changes I would have made to the book of Boba Fett or how the book of Boba Fett should have been. But again, I, I people always act surprised. What what the, I don't what happened with the book of Boba Fett? What is Disney doing? It's like you you do know that John Favreau was right there. You got to hold him accountable. He produced a stinker. It happens. But don't pretend like he's completely innocent and everything. Also, again, Mando season 3. One's meddling with something out there. Okay, because it did the consistent wise, it, it just doesn't make again. Someone's meddling with something. It, I think the book of Boba Fett was just John Favreau's stinker. I think that's what it was, and you can also attribute it to COVID and whatnot. But you gotta hold John Favreau accountable. Makes sense. Mando season one and two were literally like 
perfection. Mando season three was the most disjointed thing I've ever seen. Oh gosh, Boba yeah, Fett was, was just it was awful. Shit. To be honest, like the first two episodes were amazing. Uh -huh. Then after that, it was like, what happened? What? The booby fat. What? Yeah, what? Well, like, what's okay. going on here? I don't know. I don't know. I just feel. I feel like. I feel like. I feel like it's satire at this point. You know, it's like we just constantly keep trying to see what else they're gonna mess up at this point, and it's like I don't want to do that. I just want to enjoy Star Wars. You guys remember how hyped Star Wars fans were when Mando One came out? Oh my gosh. It was like Star Wars was back. It was like after that's after The Last Jedi. And we thought, you know, like, oh my God, okay, finally, we got something to grasp onto now. I don't know, dude. I don't know. It's just, and, and you know, they don't even want to give Kenobi a second seat. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I don't blame you, dude. Like, where are you going to go uh, from yeah. there? I mean, the whole show just focused on, ah, you guys have heard me talk about it. I'm just, so, I'm just so, I'm so frustrated. I'm so, dude. So I've seen, let me, let me just give my two cents about the Kenobi show. For me personally, even before it came out, I didn't think it needed to be a thing. I loved the idea of like trying to think of things that the Kenobi show could do or what a movie, because essentially I think everyone wanted anthology films of Darth Maul, Boba Fett, Obi-Wan and stuff like that. The stuff he was doing between then there's like, there's actually books as to what Obi-Wan was doing and him running off to fight Reva and, and protect Leia from flea isn't one of them. But I personally think like, again, it's, it's obviously they're just, pumping out the Star Wars juice from these these franchises or these these uh, these characters. But uh, the Kenobi show for me, a lot of people, as Star Wars Theory is saying, is that it's the most important show in the history of Star Wars next to Revenge of the Sith. I... <sighs> I'm fine without it. That's just me, though. Disney, like I don't know, you guys, you would do what you want to do, man. At this point, you know, you you can't. It's in the hands of the fans, and the fans are going to continue to make fan films. You guys are going to continue continue to get roasted by South Park and even bigger media that will come in the future, and you deserve it. You really do, <laughs> you because deserve you just it. you you aren't learning from anything, and you're continuously ruling with your ego, and you guys just have no idea what Star Wars is about. At the end of the day. There are many people at Lucasfilm who have a real good, clear understanding. And yes, I do think I have a very good understanding of what Star Wars is. First six films, I think I know it better than pretty much anybody. Let's, oh, okay. This is where you get into elitism. I don't do this, my friends. I think this is a bad take. Uh, don't do this. Don't say you know things better than anybody. Just say you're very passionate about it. Like. I understand where he's coming from, but I personally, it's not a good stance. Um, ugh, I don't know. I don't know. Clone Wars. I mean, you want to talk about mythology. You want to talk about Star Wars. You want to talk about character arcs. You want to talk about themes. You want to talk about the characters themselves, what they were going through, why they did what they did. You want to talk about force abilities lightsaber techniques and fighting styles and backstories and this and that. I mean, I, I know the movies and the books inside and out. A lot of... I'm not the only one. Okay, there we go. There are A millions of... of others at Lucasfilm that know so much about Star Wars. Sam Witwer and Dave Filoni. I mean, these 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 are two guys that, like, you, you can't be ha luckier finding talent like this and having them be loyal to the brand and having them work for the brand. I mean, honestly, at this point, you would be a fool to not be hiring the two of them to work together to create everything. So we have a little bit of time left in this video. Uh, what I want to say on that is just that imagine if Sam Witt was like, I don't want any sort of executive power. Just maybe he's done that. Maybe he said that. Um, maybe it's because or he says or thinks that because he's like, I don't want to be in the crosshairs of the fans if if I help produce something that people don't like. Again, Mark Hamill is Star Wars nowadays. A lot of people look to his opinion to base theirs off of it. He had he had a lot of bad takes about about Star Wars. Um, 
about how he would have done X, Y, and Z and all that stuff. Um, so I just think that just imagine, right? Maybe they, maybe Sam Whitworth doesn't want that responsibility. That's just me going forwards tired of this green light 1313 green light the force unleash three no one cares about your junk cannon just create good st this this i okay i agree with this i agree with this a wholeheartedly they can do a subsection of things kind of like like a subsection of th section of things that aren't canon like kind of how george lucas did look at my video the eu wasn't canon even when george lucas was around it was its own detached thing. But anyway, I think that's what they need to do is they need to stop trying to keep things in light. They want to make things realistic, but then they also have a nine-year-old outrunning grown-ass adults. So, like, make Star Wars be on crack because that's what the Force is. Like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, But I, I like this take of make the crazy games, make the games that fans want. Because honestly, like, what was the last Star Wars game that came out that we were blown away by? And don't tell me Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor. They had great moments. They were fun games. I was entertained. I played one playthrough of it. Didn't really care to go back. Jedi Survivor, Jedi Fallen Order, those games were good. Had good stories, but you were blown away by. It ain't going to happen in this lifetime as long as, like, as long as, like, they don't, I don't know. I like this take. Stories that we love, create the characters that we love, embellish the characters that we love, continue their stories, create Star Wars, make it great, make it what it was, give it a proper fair chance for the characters that matter, give them the money they deserve. So weird. So Why bizarre like to me. That? They'll never learn. And we'll continue to, uh, be pushed towards the prequels and originals. That's all, that's all it is. That's all. It okay. So, in closing, um, yeah, I think just let let Star Wars be fun again. I think that that's that's the the ultimate thing for me is Star Wars. Let Star Wars be fun, good and fun. Um, it's it's getting to the point like where it, there's outside. There's too much too many too much politicking in Star Wars, and I don't mean like. It's it, to the point of where, like, people are taken to a science. This character shouldn't be able to do this because we only saw two minutes of screen time of this or that or this or that. Back when I was a kid, someone just having the force meant that they could do anything. Now everything has to make sense. It's a, like what, what George Lucas even said himself. It's a story about wizards in space. Like, that's, or, and it's a, a story for nine-year-olds or 12-year-olds. Sorry. But... It, it just, just let it be fun again. Like it, like I understand, have understand having things grounded, but just let it be fun. And as he said, being pushed to the prequels and the OT, I, I honestly can't think of a time where Star Wars three has consecutively talked about the OT. He is a prequel channel and more so now a Star Wars news channel, but I feel, as I said in my video about, you know, what they should do with the ratio, I feel that we're going to have to push past it because they, they, you can't top what happened in Ahsoka with Anakin and the live action Clone Wars stuff. You can't. Um, but just make whatever you're going to do fun for people, a fun watch. Like for me, one of my favorite newest pieces of Star Wars like Disney Star Wars is solo. Yes, it wasn't great, but I had fun. Like it, it was just fun. I can turn it on, have some fun. I don't need to be worrying about the lore of this, the lore of that, the the power level of this, power level of that, who trained who. It's it's just fun. Um but yep, that's my video uh reacting to Star Wars theories uh his his rant. Uh I fill him on a lot of things. A couple things as you saw, but yeah. That'll do it for this video, guys. If you want to see anything else, let me know down below, and I'll see you all in the next one.